Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about actions, movements, and neuromotor processes and how uh, these terms are related and how we can distinguish between them. So an action is another term for a motor skill, uh, just meaning activities or tasks that require voluntary control over movements of the joints and body segments to achieve a goal. Okay, so there's three parts there. It's an activity or a task. We must use voluntary control over movement of our limbs, and it's to achieve a goal. It has a specific purpose. A movement is a component of an action. Okay, so movements are specific patterns of motion among joints and segments that we use to accomplish action goals. So several movements will come together to accomplish the goal of an action. Um, or we can have many different types of movement patterns that will achieve the same action. Um, so one action can be accomplished by many different movements and one movement can contribute to many different actions. So movements are just smaller motions that contribute to action. So we can have movements that we use in lots of different actions and we can have an action that can be accomplished by many different types of movements. So here are a few specific examples of the relationships between movements and actions. Um, so first, if we take locomotion, uh, so that would be an action that has the goal of getting from point A to point B. So there are lots of different movement patterns that we can use in locomotion. So there are lots of different types of locomotion where we would achieve the action of moving from A to B. So that could be like walking, running, hopping, even swimming if it's in the water. Um, so those are movement patterns or movements that we use to complete the action. Um, so each type of locomotion, each of those movement patterns is defined by a specific pattern of motions and relationships between joints and segments. So again, we can use lots of different types of movements to achieve the action. So we can have lots of different types of locomotion or lots of different movement patterns that can contribute to locomotion and the action of moving from point A to point B. Another example is going up the stairs. So that would be an action with the goal of getting to the top of the stairs. But we can go up the stairs in all sorts of different ways. We can go up backwards. We can go up two steps at a time. We can go up only pushing up with one leg. Um, so there are all sorts of different movements, those are what I just described, that we could use to complete the action of going up the stairs. Uh, last example here is throwing a ball. Um, so that would be an action with the goal of hitting a target. So there's some kind of purpose or goal to throwing that ball. It's an action. Uh, but there's so many different ways that we can throw a ball, so many different movements that we can use to complete the action of throwing a ball. Um, so think about like a softball pitch versus a baseball pitch. Um, we could do it with the elbow up. We could do elbow down. We can do it granny style. Like we can throw a ball in so many different ways, all to achieve the goal of hitting a target if we are skilled and we practice it. Um, but the point is that we can use all sorts of different movements to complete the same action of throwing the ball. Okay, neuromotor processes, uh, that's referring to what we can't see. Uh, we're referring to the control mechanisms happening internally that contribute. Um, so it's different from actions and movements. Those are things that we can observe with the naked eye. We can watch it happen and analyze it. Um, but neuromotor processes are invisible. Well, you know, <laughs> we can't look at the person from the outside and see them. These are things that we can observe um, using other types of methodology and technology to observe what's taking place inside of the body. Um, but it's not something that you can look at a person and observe their neuromotor process processes. Uh, so there are mechanisms within the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, and muscular system that underlie the control of movements and actions. So we care about these three things, and we care about being able to distinguish them uh, because it's really important when we're trying to understand how to teach these skills or how to learn these skills the best way. Um, so it's in order, actions, uh, skills and neuromotor processes is in the order in which motor control and learning are prioritized so that we can emphasize them in those order, in that order during the stages of learning. OK, 
Okay, so first we have to understand the action goal and explore strategies to achieve it. Um, so we want to understand what is the action? Like is the action to get to the top of the stairs? We're trying to go up the stairs. Um, if it is, then we can explore different ways to achieve that goal of getting to the top of the stairs. Like I have little kids, I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, and I've seen them go up the stairs a thousand different ways. Um, and they're really little and they're still learning the motor control. They're still learning the action of being able to get to the top of the stairs. So they explore different strategies for how they can do that the best way. Um, second, discover the best movement to accomplish the action goal based on the individual learner and their environment. Okay, so eventually with all of their practice and getting to the top of the stairs, they will land on the way, the movement pattern to get them to the top of the stairs that is the most efficient, that gets them there the fastest, that feels the most right to them based on their own bodies and characteristics and how fast are they trying to go and all of that. So um, first they need to understand the goal, which is to get to the top of the stairs, and then they can explore the different movements that they can use to get there and land on um, the one that works the best for them on the particular stairs that they're climbing. And then third, they'll refine and make the movement more efficient by modifying neuromotor processes. And we'll get into that more in future lectures. But um, once you've figured out the action goal and worked on movements to best achieve that action goal, then you can further refine um, how we're controlling uh, the muscles and, and modify those neuromotor processes. All right, so why do we care about distinguishing between these three? Uh, it's because as I just described, we need to learn motor skills in that order. Um, and we need to learn in order because if we learn out of order, like if we jump straight to here's the best way to do this without allowing the learner to explore the best way for them and their body and their context to do it, um, then we reduce that learner's ability to problem solve, be independent learners and be able to actively participate in learning. Um, so like with my kids, if the goal is to get to the top of the stairs, it's an important part of the learning process to allow them to problem solve and come up with their best way to get to the top of the stairs, as opposed to if I just said, here's how you do it, and I showed them how I do it, or maybe how the scientific community has determined is the best way to do it, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best for them. And even if it is, we're taking something away from them by taking away that opportunity to problem solve and independently learn how to do it the best way for themselves. So there's a value in doing it in the order that I just described on the previous slide. Uh, not all learners can accomplish an action goal using the same movement patterns or perform the same movement using the same neuromotor processes. So that's again, where it becomes important to explore different ways to achieve the same action goal. Um, because like there are different ways to shoot a basketball and make a basket. There are different ways to get the soccer ball into the net. There are different ways to get from the bottom of the stairs to the top of the stairs. And although scientifically and in, in, in uh, sports <laughs> science, you know, we can identify some of the best ways and the best form and, and best movement patterns to use to, to be as efficient and, and the best performance, achieve the best performance in a lot of different, uh, very established actions. Um, but there are lots of examples where very highly skilled athletes have come up with their completely unique um, motor plan or their completely unique movement pattern uh, for how to achieve the same goal. And it could be completely different from everybody else, but it works really well for them. Um, so because of that, it's important to allow athletes and learners of all kinds to explore what is the most effective and efficient strategy for them based on their own individual characteristics and the environment where they're performing that skill and other factors. And then finally, we need to know the difference between actions, movements, and neuromotor processes because we use different types of measurements and different technology, different systems of measurement uh, to evaluate each of those three different levels of learning. 
Um, so we need to know what we're actually evaluating to be able to choose the right process to do that evaluation. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.